I'm Joey, and I'm a huge geek. Huge! Whoever he finds, he's got to be able to bring back home to Ma. I'm not looking for much. I just want to find a girl who will give me hugs and kisses and isn't my mother. My mom is a bit torn about sci-fi speed dating. Would you want me to find like a nice girl to bring home? I, I don't think that's the place to find a nice girl. What kind of girl are you going to find at Comic-Con? The kind of girl who- We are girls go there. On the other hand, my mom likes me where I am right now, living at home with her. So uh, as far as she's concerned, like, you know, any woman in my life is a threat. I think it's funny to watch someone who is over 300 pounds call girls who go to Comic-Con undesirable. That lack of perspective is why your son is still living with you indefinitely at 25 years old. Anyway, this is Geek Love, a two-season reality show that ran in 2011 and again in 2013. The show follows nerds as they go to Comic-Con and attend a speed dating session to try and find their perfect match. For me personally, I couldn't care less about the speed dating aspect of this show. That's not why I think it's interesting. What does interest me in this situation is the deep desire for these guys' mothers to keep them from developing socially so that they remain as adult children forever. So the Oedipal situation, roughly speaking, is when a child is seriously overprotected, usually a male child, by his mother. And so the relationship between the husband and the wife was either strained or non-existent. And the wife would often turn to the child to be what she isn't getting from the husband. The Oedipal mother basically entices the child, says, look, here's the deal. You don't have to do anything, but you don't get to leave. But if you don't leave and you don't do these difficult things, then I'll take care of you. And so the reason she does that is because she's lonesome and doesn't have anybody else around. And, you know, maybe she's also deeply, deeply, deeply terrified that if she helps that boy grow up, he will leave and she'll have nothing. Our main character, Joey's situation, is not the end result of having a large Spider-Man collection. I mean, the Avengers and the Marvel Cinematic Universe proved that there are a whole boatload of normies who are into comic book heroes as long as the stories are good. What has actually happened is that no one has taught Joey or taught any of the men who are on Geek Love how to be men. And as Jordan Peterson suggested, this epidemic of adult children is occurring because there are no men in the house or the men are weak and the moms aren't setting their sons up with the strength to deal with reality. In fact, a lot of those mothers are actively sabotaging their sons. Because honestly, these guys aren't incapable of being adults. Both of the examples of men I have in this video are guys who are completely capable of being independent. But their mothers are holding them back. They're selfishly holding their sons back so they can simp for them like 40-year-old Joaquin Phoenix simps for his mom in the Joker movie. And what this is essentially saying is something really, really kind of disgusting. Joey admits that his mom is afraid of him leaving. She's afraid her son will leave because she knows she has very little value as a person. She knows she is so cruel and mean-spirited that she could never have real friends or build a strong relationship with other family members or, God forbid, her own husband. So what she does is takes her son's dependence on her from childhood, never lets him do anything difficult so that he's always dependent on her, and finally beats him down at every point while he's dependent so he constantly seeks her approval. You can see her doing this on the show, even though she's being polite for the camera. Would you want me to find like a nice girl to bring home? I, I don't think that's the place to find a nice girl. What kind of girl are you gonna find at Comic-Con? The kind of girl who- Weird girls go there. Why would you want to date a girl at Comic-Con? Those girls are weird. They do drugs and they aren't good for you. You see how she's giving him negative feedback when he tries to be independent? The end result of this is that his mom has him right where she wants him. He isn't able to do anything difficult because he always relies on her and he is so desperate for her approval that he does things that turn other people off. For example, he gets a date with a girl after the speed dating session and for their very first date, they go home to meet his mom and play video games. Hi, welcome. Hi. Hey. Nice to meet you. You too, I'm Emily. Hey. Hi. So you like to play video games? I am a gamer, yes. Oh, wow. So, Emily, are you originally from New York? Or? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm from Delaware. I'm just up here for college. Oh, where do you go? Uh, I go to Columbia. Oh, great. Hi, Lee. Wow. We're actually just going to go and play some play? video games. Yeah. Okay. Let's just go. <laughs> now, you could say, well, he wanted to play video games on his first date, and the only way to do that was to go home where his parents were. Not the case. 
This was 2013, not that long ago. There were many options to play video games outside of the house. For example, he could have just used a portable game like a Nintendo DS or a PSP. I see plenty of people doing things like that at conventions all the time. But let's pretend for a second that he didn't have any portable games. I have never been to a convention that focuses on anime, video games, or comics, especially a massive one like New York Comic Con that didn't have some place off to the side full of arcade games, full of classic video game systems, or even a TV set up with Super Smash Bros. There was no reason this girl Emily had to meet Joey's mom on the first date. Joey's need for approval is his mom's self-defense mechanism to make sure that he simps for his mom instead of some other girl. Because the first thing a girl is going to think when he brings her home to mommy on a first date is, this guy is weird. Uh, yeah, meeting the parents on a first date was a little bit weird. During this episode, you can really see the detrimental effect that Joey's mom has had on him because he was extremely lacking in dating experience at 25, which is something he feels bad about. But when he does the speed dating event and shows his personality, he ends up being the most popular guy. Joey nails it. Every girl writes their number on his paper. So Joey got his eye on Doctor Who, and there's a good chance she likes him. The problem is every girl wants him. Whoever gets to him first wins. Again, this video is not about the dating. It's more so about someone who is perfectly capable of achieving what he wants, but his mom, for her own selfish desires, is holding him back while his dad basically just sits in the background. Now, I haven't been able to figure out what has happened to Joey in the seven years since this was filmed, but it seems to me that he was in the process of escaping his mother's grasp. Before this show was filmed, he lost 80 pounds, and after the show was filmed, he moved out of his parents' house. Hey, it's me, Joey, and what speed dating at Comic-Con taught me was that, you know, it's very hard to ha bring girls over the house uh, to introduce them to my mom or to hang out here at my house uh, if my mom's going to basically be questioning whether or not they're virgins or what their motives are with me or anything like that. And so basically what this entire experience taught me is that it's time to move out. Even though it appears that Joey made it out, I can't help but think about the people who don't make it or the people who are less fortunate. Okay, yeah. looking for guys or girls? Oh, girls, definitely. Okay. Hi, I'm Alex, I am 25, and I am a giant geek. My love life status is a mix of forever alone and socially awkward penguin. It's meme-tastic. I'm a renaissance geek. I like comics, I like board games, I love Doctor Who, and uh, I am also a brony. So what a brony is is someone who watches My Little Pony. Okay, this is uh, Pinkie Pie, she likes to party. Now, of course, it's very easy to make fun of Alex. He is a 25-year-old who lives with his parents, he's overweight, he has an awkward beard, and he watches My Little Pony. Unfortunately, you don't get to see Alex's parents like you do with Joey, but there is a reason the mother's basement stereotype exists. There's a formula to create guys like Alex, and an overprotective, eatable mother is how you do it. So, of course, you could make fun of him, but I don't think that behavior is productive because it's guys like Alex who would do anything for a woman just to get her approval. This means he is an easy target to be manipulated by women and a great vessel for toxic female behavior to be developed. And if you think that it's just the attractive ones that engage in this bad behavior, then you would be wrong. What kind of girl do you want to meet when you go to con? Like, uh, I mean, there's many types of nerds. So Someone, yeah. <laughs> what what um, type of nerd would you like? No, seriously, though. Like, what type of girl would you optimally like to meet there? Yeah, I guess you, but not crazy and hyper. So you essentially want my non-evil twin. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. That's a little creepy, Alex. <laughs> Some of my challenges with girls are just the girls that I really do like, that I'm really interested in. I just want to be friends. This girl, Carolyn, who is not an 8, 9, or 10, or even a 7, knows Alex really likes her. Instead of being completely honest with him and shutting him down so he doesn't sit there and orbit her for the rest of his life, she keeps him around and, I guess, gives him dating advice. Clearly, no one has taught Alex anything about women, so he doesn't know this, but she's not doing this stuff because they are friends. She's doing this because she likes the attention he gives her, and she's giving him dating advice because she thinks he's pathetic. What kind of questions are you going to ask? Who's your favorite pony? <laughs> oh my god, are you a brony? 
Oh, yes, I am. Oh, my God. You know that's up there with MMOers, right? No, it is. Yes, it is. If she really wanted to help, then she wouldn't friend zone him and participate in this weird relationship. But she isn't going to do that because women don't do things like that. They like collecting resources, and she knows that she can eventually use Alex's attraction to her to get him to do stuff for free. The most productive thing we can do in this situation is to make sure guys like Alex don't become simps for women. This reminds me of a comment that gets thrown around by people who are anti MGTOW where they say, MGTOW are just incels in denial. They are only red pill because they can't get women. You know what? Mission accomplished. Red pill all the incels because at least then they won't be enabling bad behavior from women. At the very least, maybe they will stop making everything about women and actually get their lives together. And this is not just some impossible feat for Alex or guys like him. Alex is not retarded. Alex is not autistic. He is just unskilled. The reason he doesn't converse well is because he hasn't practiced very much. Now, there are two important aspects of building the skill. One, exposure to new experiences, and two, repetition. That is how skill develops, and you can actually see this happening with Alex during this episode. When Alex goes on to his first speed date, he is absolutely terrible. So, uh, how long have you been? So, how are you enjoying Comic-Con so far? What? How are you enjoying Comic-Con so far? Like it. Just look at that. In his first conversation, he can barely even speak. But after a little practice, he gets way better. I work in the health education field. Okay. Health ed teacher, putting condoms on bananas, things like that. It's always fun. It always, you know, shocks people when you pull the banana out, but hey. Yeah. Oh, Idris. Oh, you know who I am. Of course. Hey, okay. let me like make some Grumpy notes on like. Yeah. yeah. He exposed himself to a new experience, which was speed dating. He practiced with 30 different people during the event, and by the end of the event, he got significantly better. After that, he really only needs to fix one thing in terms of conversation, which is that he comes off as weird. And the reason that happens is because he's saying absolutely everything on his mind and doesn't filter out unnecessary information. You want to meet up sometime after this? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, but I've got a little bit of time right now if you want to yeah, keep we could, chatting. I could, we could walk around, uh, you know. Yeah. Got, I can walk you back to your booth as well. If you need okay. <laughs> cool. Thanks. I mean, it's like, you can do it yourself, of course. But, you, <laughs> but you know, if you want to, yeah. you can go out in the company. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, getting back to Jordan Peterson for a second, because one of the things I heard him say is that he came to a point in his life where he decided to stop saying things that make him weak. In the previous clip, you can see Alex sitting with the girl who likes him, and he offers to walk her back to her booth. Not exactly a date, but good enough for him. Then immediately after he offers to walk with her, he says, of course, she could just walk back by herself. Do you see how that second statement destroys his offer to spend more time with her and makes him look weird? If he had simply not said that, he may not have gotten rejected by her as soon as they walked out of the room. So, yeah, what happened after speed dating was that after talking to Kate, basically on camera, uh, cameras were off, and we walked away, and what happened was that basically, uh, she told me after about a minute, basically that she just wanted to be friends. So basically, kind of, uh, nothing ever happened, of course. I understand, but it, it was kind of depressing. And it's not just Alex who does this kind of stuff. He may be worse than the average person, but everyone is guilty at some point of doing what he did. The key to good conversation is to start thinking about the best things you can say versus whatever insecure ideas come into your head first. I mean, even when I write, I hit the delete key a lot. I do that because I'm casting out all the bad ideas so we can focus on the things that actually matter and the things I have good evidence for. And this can be expanded to every aspect of your being. You can start systematically getting rid of the things that make you weak. Imagine what Alex's life would be like if he took a razor and shaved that awful looking beard. Imagine how much better he would be if he lost about 120 pounds. Imagine what his life would be like if he stopped spending $5,000 a year on video games and comics and instead invested that into himself. That's how you start living a life that's fulfilling instead of wallowing in self-pity while being taken advantage of by women you like who don't like you back. When you start focusing on bettering your own standing, 
you will stop caring about which women like you and which women don't. And that will be enough for this video. If you liked it, hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, comment and share. If you would like to support this channel, then you can do so by donating through PayPal, Subscribestar, or Patreon. All of those links are in the description or they're on my channel page. Last, if you haven't checked me out on BitChute yet, then you can do so by also checking the link in the description or on the channel page. Other than that, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.